Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. My name is Katrina and today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt using a magic four patch. And the beauty of this is you can make this quilt using any size square. So the quilt behind me is made using a layer cake. You can also make it using a charm pack. And I've also got an example to show you of making it using smaller squares. So for this project, you will need either a layer cake or a charm pack. Or if you want to, you can cut your own squares depending what size you want to cut them. And later on in the tutorial, I'll show you another example of a quilt made using three and a half inch squares. You will also need a metre of fabric for your border and a metre of fabric for your fillet and binding. Now, if you're not going to put a fillet in, you can get away with less fabric for your binding. But for the purposes of today, I'm suggesting a metre of each. And for your backing, you're going to need three and a half metres. If you're going to make a quilt the size of the one behind me, which is approximately 60 inches square. Again, I'm going to show you that you can get away with less fabric because at the end of this, I'm going to show you how I've pieced the back. So you're also going to need some tools. You're going to need a rotary cutter, a ruler and a cutting mat. Now, ideally for this project, I would recommend a rotating cutting mat. But if you haven't got one of those, it's not the end of the world. You can make do with your regular cutting mat. So you're going to need an iron and a pressing mat or an ironing board, whatever you use to press your fabric on. You'll also need some pins, a sewing machine. I've put neutral coloured thread onto my machine and I would suggest that you load two bobbins before you start this project because there's quite a lot of piecing to do. And to piece your pieces together, you're going to need a quarter of an inch foot. And when you come to quilt your quilt, you're going to need a walking foot. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need are four squares of fabric to make your magic four patch. So whatever size you've chosen, whether it's a layer cake or a charm pack, you take four squares of different colours and you join them together like this. So I'm just going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to join this block of four together. So I'm going to join my four pieces together and we're going to use a quarter of an inch seam throughout. So right sides together. I've stopped with my needle in because I'm going to do chain piecing. So if I was making this whole quilt, I would do all of my cutting and then I would do all of my machining so I can just sit here and chain piece all of mine. But for today, I'm just gonna do one block to show you. Now, ordinarily, I'd go back over to the iron, but because I'm going to just join these here, I'm going to just finger press them so I can join them to make our four patch. But as I say, normally I would go to the iron and I would press all of these. So you can see I'm just finger pressing that seam and then I'm going to join these two together. So I'm going to look which way my seams have gone. So I've got one seam going one way and one seam going the other way. I'm just going to pop a pin in there to hold it. And then I'm going to sew this down. that with all of your blocks 
and then I'm going to go to the iron and give it a good press and then I'll show you how we cut it. So the quilt that's behind me today started out with 36 10 inch squares. So depending on what size you want your quilt to be, you would sew all of your blocks together in groups of four. So we're now going to go to the iron and we're going to press this. So I'm just going to give this a press so it's nice and flat for cutting. And I'm going to go to our cutting mat and I'm going to use this rotating mat. So when you use a five inch square, as I've done here, you need to cut off one and a quarter inches. If you were doing it with a 10 inch square, you would cut two and a half inches. So it's always about a quarter of the size of the square. So what do we do? We line up our ruler with this center line here. So I'm going to just line it up there. So that is an inch and a quarter. And I'm going to make that first cut. So the inch and a quarter line is actually on my seam. Now I'm going to turn this mat and I'm going to place my ruler back on here on the seam line and I'm going to cut another inch and a quarter. And that's why I love these mats so much because you haven't got to move your work. So turn it again, an inch and a quarter again on my seam line. Just double check that's right, yep. Yeah. And finally, one more cut. And you do that with all of your squares, or you may want to just do it one at a time so that you can then sew it back together again. Because what we have to do is we have to move things around. And this is why it's called a magic four patch. So we take this first piece here, which is at 12 o'clock, and I move that round so it is now at three o'clock. I take the one that was three o'clock, and put it at six o'clock. I take the one that was at six, I put it at nine, and the one that was at nine, I put at 12. And then you would sew that piece to that piece to that piece, that one to that one to that one, that one to that one to that one, and then you would sew them together. So here's one that I've already sewn together. So if I just move this out of the way for a moment and I'll show you the one that I've sewn together. So you can see here, I've got a big square and a little square, a big square and a little square and so on all the way around. You don't have to do it like that. You can jumble it up as much as you want, as long as you've got all the colors mixed up. And that's why it's called a magic four patch. Here's one I've got prepared that I've done using a layer cake. So this was a 10 inch square. So you can see how that's worked out. And that is the same as in the quilt behind me. So you can see the difference in the two squares. And I just think it's a lovely way of creating a really colorful quilt. Now for one more idea to give you some inspiration, I've got a quilt here that Mary made for us and she's used three and a half inch squares and she's done it in sort of Christmassy colors and this is a batik and she's cut these squares herself. So she joined the squares exactly as I've just shown you and then she's cut the strips. Now I'm just going to measure because I think the strips that she cut were three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to measure that to see 
if that's what she cut. No, she must have cut one, two, three. She actually cut an inch off and then she's turned it round. But if you were daring, you could go down to three quarters of an inch. As I always say, make these your own and just enjoy the process. We're now gonna go over and look at the quilt on the wall to see how that's been finished off. So this quilt has been really simply quilted. We've just quilted in the ditch around the squares. Because there's quite a lot going on, I didn't want too busy quilting on it. The border fabric is this lovely big print and I think you want to show off when you've got a big print so you can use a bigger piece of the fabric so you can see it here and then that's echoed onto the border as well. So the fillet is in green and the binding is in brown so picking out the colours that are on this border and I'm now going to turn the quilt over and show you how to make a back with your leftover pieces. So as you can see, I've pieced the back because I didn't have a piece of fabric big enough to do the whole thing. And I quite like that idea because it's also using up all your odd bits that you've got left over. This was one of the first quilts I made using a layer cake. And since then, I've probably made hundreds of quilts using layer cakes. And I have to say, layer cakes are probably my favorite pre-cut. So as always, have fun, make it your own, and I look forward to seeing you next time here in the sewing studio.